This is the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. After using the phone for a week, I would use one word to describe it, and that's smooth. So the first smooth experience from using the phone is holding the phone itself. The matte glass finish you find on the back of the phone feels like velvet, and it's so nice to touch. Although I've got to say, it can be a bit slippery, and I've nearly dropped the phone a couple of times within the first week. So best to put a case on it. Other design points worth noting is the super bright and vivid 6.9 inch Super AMOLED display that for me is best in class. Now, the camera module on the back of the phone is big and has divided opinion. For me, I really like it. It makes the phone unique and stands out and it also complements the phone really well. Despite this phone looking excellent, the design isn't all good. For me, the curved display shouldn't be on a Note phone. It restricts the use of the S Pen at the edges of the screen. To me, it feels like the S20 Ultra should have had the curved screen and the Note should have had the more flatter screen that the S20 Ultra has. Of course, if you want a flatter screen, then you can always pick up the Note 20, which has taken a bit of a battering in press and media since the announcement alongside the Note 20 Ultra. Another design flaw for me is the fact that the large camera bump, which I've already said I quite liked in terms of aesthetically, isn't practical. It means that when the phone is laid flat on a table, you know, like a notebook would be for writing and doodling, it just jumps up and down and makes a hell of a noise using it. So it's not ideal. Using a case does help stop this to some extent, but it still rocks and isn't great. And one last minor picky point from me is the fact that the S Pen has moved position this year, which I just can't get used to. I still keep going to put the S Pen onto the right side of the phone instead of the left. Yes, the screen is super smooth, mainly due to the introduction of a 120Hz adaptive LTPO display. This means that scrolling and general navigation around the phone is super fast. Once you have a phone that has 120Hz, it's really hard to go back to the typical 60Hz or even 90Hz screens. Now one frustration is the fact that you can't use the adaptive display with the full Quad HD capability of, of the phone. Presumably this is to say battery life, but, you know, I've just paid £1,200 for a phone, so I think I should be the one who decides whether I want the longer battery life or I want the best display with 120 hertz. So the main reason you're probably looking at getting a Note phone, the main differentiation between any other phone on the market is the S Pen. And this year's stylus is the best one yet. For the first time, the S Pen has a latency of just nine milliseconds. To put this in context, last year's phone on the Note 10 Plus had a latency of 26 milliseconds. So what does this mean? Well, this means that the slight lag that you used to get when using previous generations of S Pen is almost basically gone. So writing and doodling now actually feels like you're using paper and pen. Now the S Pen does include some added air gestures, which, you know, surprise, surprise for me, still don't work 100%. In fact, they probably still don't work 30% of the time for me. So I just don't bother and it does feel like it's a bit of a gimmick. Do using those gestures really save you time compared to just tapping a button on the screen? I don't think they do. But when they do work, they do look good. Now the Note 20 Ultra features the same camera module as the S20 Ultra, a 12 megapixel wide angle, a 12 megapixel telephoto lens, and an incredible 108 megapixel main wide angle camera module. The big difference between the S20 and the Note 20 Ultra this year is that they binned off the time of flight sensor that was found on the S20 Ultra and on the Note 10 Plus and replaced this with a new super fast laser autofocus. Now you may recall that the S20 Ultra was beset with focusing issues, particularly when shooting video. Now I'm glad to report that the laser autofocus has fixed these problems for me 95% of the time. Every now and then I do get some issues with focus which may last for one or two seconds and then all of a sudden the autofocus kicks in. Now speaking of the camera as a whole, I've been super impressed with the quality of the photos and videos that I've been able to take whilst using the phone. The photos are ultra vibrant and colour rich and very good lighting. Night mode is now excellent and for me on par with what the Pixel phones offer. And the ability to take high detail 108 megapixel pictures is also fantastic. And I think you can actually really see the difference. The Note 20 Ultra also offers up to 50 times digital zoom. Now I'm gonna do a full video on all the different camera modes in more detail, but I would say the five times optical zoom is really impressive and up to about 20 times digital zoom is also brilliant. After that, it's not so great, but I'll touch on that in another video.
For me, Samsung phones have always been the best video capturing Android phones out there. By offering pro mode video settings, which now includes the ability to change the ISO, shutter speed, and also the option to choose what microphones you use to record audio. And if you do want an Android device to record video, shoot vlogs, etc., then this is definitely the device for you. On the front of the phone, you find a 10 megapixel selfie camera, which is okay. Photos are all right, nothing amazing. You do get a slight wide angle option, for taking selfies to get more into the shot, which is again, okay, nothing amazing. You do get to record video, 4K at 60 frames per second on the front camera also. For me, the most underrated feature on a Samsung phone at the moment is DeX. The ability to turn a monitor or TV into a Chromebook on the go is super useful. This year, the Note 20 Ultra brings wireless DeX, meaning that at the touch of a button, and it really is that quick, you can turn your TV into a desktop computer. You can even use the phone as a trackpad. And yeah, as you guessed it, the trackpad is super smooth and responsive. Alternatively, you can pair a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard to really make it like a laptop experience. Also, honorable mentions have to go to the standard 25 watt, watt fast wireless charge. And one of my favorite features on an Android phone, the reverse wireless charging, which for me is super great particularly for charging up wireless headphones on the go. So for me, by far the most disappointing feature of using the phone so far has been the battery life. The phone struggles to make it to the end of the day for me. I regularly have to put it on charge around about 7 p.m. in the evening to make sure it gets me through until I go to bed. Now, of course, this may improve with software updates. So you really are having to compromise with the fact that the Note 20 Ultra holds an S Pen, which means that you're gonna have a smaller battery inside the phone. So you have to weigh that up when considering what's best for you. So in conclusion, what do I think of the phone after a week? It's super stylish, it looks great. I love the new S Pen, I love the 120 Hertz screen, and I love features like wireless decks and having reverse wireless charging. But is it worth 1200 pounds? Well, to be fair to Samsung, they always offer good trading offers. And in reality, this phone cost me just under 900 pounds. So at that price, if you've got a Note 10 Plus, would I upgrade? Probably not, no. I'd wait for next year's Note. But if you're coming from a Note 9 or older, then I think it's definitely worth the upgrade. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a thumbs up. I've got plenty more Note 20 Ultra coverage coming up over the next couple of weeks. So please subscribe to the channel. 